The creature charged and he dived out of the way. It slammed into the side of the circular chamber with a loud crunch, the wall panel buckling. He pulled himself up, aching all over and limped to the other side of the chamber. It was twice the size of a man. It moved forward by swinging from its spiky chit arms to its feet and back again. With incredible speed, he watched as it turned around, oriented itself, and then charged again, the floor shaking. He waited until the last possible second and then leaped Again, his arm torn open, this time by one of his spikes. The creature bellowed in rage or frustration, turning all about, trying to locate him. By the time it finally did, he was on the opposite side of the chamber, as far away from it as he could get. Okay, he thought, gripping his injured arm, now it's time. It's my turn. It charged him again. This time, instead of throwing himself sideways, he dived between his arms, sliding under it and up against his soft abdomen. He pulled his knife out and slit across its dead flesh, tearing it open as much as he could, then scrambled quickly up and away, stumbling across the room. Before he got far, it caught him by the foot and swung him like a doll and let go. He smashed into the wall hard. He turned to get up, but he couldn't move. He had felt the air rush out of him when he hit the wall. But it was more than that. Perhaps his back was broken. He expected the creature to charge again, but he didn't. Instead, it approached him leisurely, almost seriously. He watched it approach, and his fear began to build. The squaw creature loomed over him. He, it struck him once, brutally knocking him back against the wall. For a moment, he thought he might pass out, but suddenly the room took on an intensity and crispness that it hadn't had before. The creature lifted him up in the air, gave again its bellowing call. It shook him violently before bringing his head into its small. A moment later, it tore his body in half. A moment after that, he was dead. Part 1, Chapter 1 Chava woke up. Chava woke up early than usual that day just before the sun rose. His mother and sister were still asleep. His father was gone, traveling again. When the boy asked him where he went, he was always evasive, and Chava had learned not to ask further. He took a ladle full of water from the bucket and drank it, careful not to wake his sister. He poured another into the basin and washed his face and hands and arms before quietly sloping the rest onto the dirt floor. He was still sleepy. He watched his sister move restlessly, giving a little moan. Why had he woken up early? He had been in the middle of a freight frightened dream. There was something chasing him, a strange stumbling creature, something that moved in lurches and starts something that seemed at once alive and dead. He shook his head, wondering how something could be both alive and dead. He slipped 
into his clothes and left the shake. Jack, careful to stop the piece of aluminum that served as a makeshift door from clacking behind him. Outside, he could smell the salt in the air, could see a few hundred meters away, the slate gray waves. The tide was out, the waves gentle, now hard to hear from his, from this distance. <clears throat> Something lingering in his head, a noise, a strange sound, a whisper. It was saying words, but in a language he couldn't understand so softly that he couldn't even tell where one word stopped and another started. He tried to force the sound out, but though it receded, it didn't go away. It just hid itself somewhere deep in the back of his skull, nagging at him. His dream rushed forward to fill the space. The creature had been large, just a little bigger than a man. He was watching it from behind. In the dream, at first, he had thought it was a man, but it, when it turned, he saw that it was a was missing part of its face, the jaw. There was something wrong with his arms as well, but the dream was blurry and it couldn't make out what it was exactly. It watched him with eyes as blank and inhuman as the eyes of a fish, and then a single bound hissing it had been on him. Its sla slavering half jaw trying to sink broken teeth into his throat. He was wondering, not really aware of where he was going, trying to fight off the bits of dream, playing out in his semi-conscious mind. He was surprised to find himself down at the shoreline to the left. The coast was empty, down the coast to his right, far in the distance where two or three fishermen standing in the surface trying to pull something in. Whatever it was the boy knew would almost certainly be disformed and taste of oil. It would be a challenge to choke down. It was no longer safe to fish. The sea here was polluted and starting to die and similar problems were working their way inland as well. He'd heard his father talking angrily about it. Corpse that even a few years back had been healthy and strong now came up stunted if they came up at all. The only supposedly safe food was the patented foods grown in controlled environments by mega corporations food that few could afford. So the choice his father said was either to eat food that slowly killed you or go broke on food you couldn't afford while everyone went on destroying the world. He started walking toward the fisherman, but something hindered his steps slowly turning him. He began moving down the beach in the other direction where it was deserted, or almost deserted. There was something there, something rolling in the surf. A fish, maybe, he thought, at first, but as he walked forward it seemed too large to be a fish, and the shape was wrong. A corpse maybe drowned man. But when it flopped back and forth in the tide, he knew he was wrong, that it was wrong. The hair started to stand on the back of Cheva's neck. He walked for toward the thing, trying not to s listen to the rising cacophony of whispers talking over his head. 